Well, hello and welcome to today's show. Today's show is for entertainment only. It's not intended to instruct and don't do anything I did here. Now that I've got my took us covering uh, announcement out in front, we can go ahead and look at it. I recently worked on the downstairs water heater. That's a Bradford White LP gas unit. It's in the barn. I mean, garage. I really need a building to put all my junk in my equipment and stuff like that so I can give it a good clean out and maybe park a car in there. But it's it's got some spider webs. Don't pick on my pets. I can't afford a dog. Anyway, we're going to look at, at uh, doing some maintenance on this water heater and uh, we're going to roll title right now. Do not mistake what you assume. They never left the dining room. That's a line from Murder by Death, one of my favorite movies starring Peter Falk and some other great stars. But it's important. Let's get to it. Well, if you can see through the spider webs and the dirt, what we got going on here, we have our old water heater. Now, it's recently been not feeling like it's been getting up to temperature correctly, and uh, it's several years old, so we were going to look at it. And the other day, I was down in the garage, and I heard it short cycling. I thought, well, it shouldn't be doing that. It's igniting fine. But what the issue was is it is it would come on and it would not get to full temperature and it would cut off a little bit easier. And now I'm going to light it and I pulled off the little side panel. And now we're going to see go through the, the purge of the water heater with the draft inducer and we'll see it light up. Hopefully it'll light up. I've got a replacement burner we're going to put on it, but we're going to notice something through the peephole as soon as it kicks off. There it goes. Didn't light, there it goes. Now do you see the color of that? Now with the age of this particular water heater, the tank's not leaking, but they're about $1,500. And that's for the cost of the unit, plus to haul away and put a new one in and install it and all that. So the issue is, if it ain't leaking, don't fix it. But the burner's not burning right. And you can see, we're pretty orange in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it with a new burner and it'll heat for a little bit, then it'll kick back off because it's, is it's like it's not finding flame, proof of flame. Now, it could be a gas valve, but I suggest to myself that what it is, is simply not burning completely and cleanly, and it's not hitting that sensor properly, and so it's a little bit erratic. So we're gonna do a little rector set stuff and put her together. Now, burner replacements are generally very simple to do, and so you're really not exposing any gas hazards to what you're doing, because except for the little pilot circuit, especially if you have a standing pilot, you can, leave, you can lose a little bit of gas there, but it's not a big deal because we soap bubble the connection. We make sure we don't cross thread, be careful with your valve because they're expensive, and we just turn off the gas at the appliance shutoff. And by code, you're supposed to have an appliance shutoff right there at the device, right there, either above the dirt leg or before the dirt leg. It just needs to be placed in there so that you can shut that off for doing stuff like replacing gas valves and things like that, which we didn't do, but we do have to take the pilot circuit, which does have a little bit of gas available to that, apparently, because uh, we noticed that after we had the unit shut off, it's not gonna go through the burner. There's no gas in the burner, so we just take those two off. Now, the Bradford White I had actually has a, a left-hand thread on one of those fittings and right-hand thread on the other fitting, so be careful. If you can turn it one way and it doesn't feel like it wants to go, try to bump it the other way. Normally, gas connections aren't extraordinarily high, but they're nice and tight. They're low pressure on the gas system, and, and we soap bubble the connection when we're done, which is just literally what it sounds like. Where there's a little swab that you can get buy at the store, like soap bubbles, like a, a bubble blower, and you bubble around the connections and then see if it actually grows the bubble, which would indicate gas is coming out. So it's not a, it's not a big deal, and you wanna work in a well-ventilated area and that kind of stuff. Turn off the service valve before you do anything. Unplug the device before you do anything. Common, basic safety type of things. Now, I've been around this a long time. Not a super expert at it, but I can replace a burner. Now, let's get to the next part. Well, to my surprise, this is in surprisingly good shape. I know what you're saying. It's good shape. Look at that nasty thing. Well, it's not rotted out. What it is is plugged. It's filthy. So I think I may actually because of the other fitment of the other unit, which I, I can probably set up and use, but um, what I'm looking at here is an extreme case of the ash or the crud that comes in with propane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this off. And if you see, you see the inlet here, I may go ahead and replace it anyway. I've already paid for it. It would be the smart thing to do if it looks like it will, but you see that inlet there? 
is plugged up. Now I can clean this off, brush this off, air it out, push it out, make sure that it burns properly. And then what we'll see what we can do. Now let me put that down there on the paper and show you the new one. Now here's the new one. Same thing. And you see, do you see the air chamber that we, we pull up through the center of that burner? Because it has sort of that venturi effect as we run gas in it, it will also pull air in and mix with it. And we can see how nice and clean these are. Uh, obviously, it's brand new. You can see the passageway. So we can use this. We'll clean the other one up and see what it looks like. But what I didn't get is the full assembly. And I have to be concerned about how we're going to refelt that because the felt on this side should be replaced. But it's not really consistent with this assembly that we have. And I'd have to break that apart see how that goes. I may choose to uh, call the manufacturer's rep back and see if, if in fact this is the correct one we need. All right, well here I have cleaned this up and be quite honest, this will probably outlast the tank. Now what you see on the end there, on the center, is the orifice. They did not ship me a new orifice to go with this assembly. Oh yes they did, go back and look again. And the assembly itself is incomplete, so I'm about half a mind to uh, just take the part back and use what I've got. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it because I want to set a good example when working with gas appliances. You can see it's good and clear now that I got it opened up. We don't see rust. And I, I honestly anticipated the rust because when I looked through the people, the pattern of the flame was so bad. But the pattern of the flame that was so bad was because it was so sooted up. And, of course, I didn't want to break the unit down until I was able to put it back together. Uh, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and put the parts in anyway, but I'll go ahead and keep these old ones. This is how your garage gets full of, of shelves of stuff that probably should go into garbage or recycling, but we don't put it there because, you know, it, hard times, hard times. But anyway, this water heater, I think when I looked up the um, serial number on Bradford White, they told me it was, I, warranty was out in 2005. And so, what does that make it? We only got uh, 20 years, well, not quite 20 years out of it because ultimately it was manufactured, I think, 2004. All right, upon closer examination, the felt is actually what I need. I was concerned about taking the plate off that we have right here and redoing it because I don't want the leakage around the plate. Clean the little spyglass off. Here is the felt. It's shipped in two pieces. Good economical way to do that, save that center. So what we have is we have the right piece here and the left piece there, except it's upside down, but you get the idea. We do have the felt we need, so we can reuse the plate. A lot of these that I've seen lately come as a full assembly, and they don't let people uh, break this section open, but I do have what I need, less, of course, the orifice. No, they sent it to you. Which I've already put down on the burner so we could get it by with what we had just cleaning it up putting it back in there i'm sure and had a free repair of the water heater but you know we've already ordered it might as well continue to set that good example and put her back with new parts if you like this content please go to calldeltacell.com find the tab that says on youtube click it and it'll open up a page of qr codes there you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the youtube page or you can just mouse over and click it on a pc there you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you. Thank you. Now, are you ready for a confession? All right. I have to tell you, I have never in my life seen a gas appliance this filthy. And so I naturally assume that we rotted out the uh, burner because that's usually the first thing to go. Because as you know, if you have anything that's outside, now this is in the barn, I mean, I mean garage. And so it, it's not exposed to extreme temperatures, but it does get cold in there. And what happens a lot of times with these metals, they're generally plated. Some of them are stainless steel. I don't know what's in Bradford White. But what happens is the burner gets hot because it's burning gas. And so it gets real hot. And if it's outside, like on a package unit, a terminal unit or a grill or something like that, or even an outdoor heater, when it cools down, it tends to sweat. And that sweat will work on the finish if it's a plated material, specifically if it's like galvanized because it gets hot and it kind of wants to burn some of that off anyway. And then it just sweats and rust and you get a cycle of rust building up. Some burners are, in fact, uh, cast iron and they will rust and occlude and flake off on you that kind of stuff so i just naturally assume looking at the flame i know what the flame's supposed to look like it ain't supposed to be orange it's supposed to be bluish so i just thought well given that this 
inspection tag on this unit from when the guy hooked up the gas line to it was 2005. I know it's been a while, almost 20 years. So it's a pretty fair assumption that the burner was rusted out and therefore it wasn't mixing well with the oxygen and so that's why it was orange. When I got into it, I found it very dirty. The uh, parsimonious side of me said, well, you know, this thing's 19 years old. Why don't I just clean this puppy back off and put her back in there? And I could, but I'd have to return my part. And it's there anyway, might as well. So we went ahead and put it in there. As you've probably seen or will see, I didn't find the orifice right away, so I cleaned it up. And it was in good shape. It was in good shape. So it wasn't really a problem. I could have reused that. And we verified that it was, in fact, for LP. So we went ahead and just used it. The assembly was a little bit different. The felt is a little bit short which you always want to make sure you, you have it sealed up so the air draws as the designers want it to. Don't ever knock out your your sight glass because it'll suck air in there and that can disturb the pattern. They want, it, they want it to draw as evenly as it can through the areas that it's going to pull from. So we don't want to change how the flame burns on the burner. And we just cleaned it up. But the felt is a little bit short. Now, they didn't send me the, the little bracket, the full assembly like is common now. now that Nowadays, it's very common that when you buy a burner, you get the whole piece and you just disconnect the lines and the striker or whatever you might have that goes down to the unit. And then you pull that whole piece out, put the whole piece back in there, and it just, just seals right up. This was a little bit different. Took me a while to figure that out as I was sitting there cleaning and vacuuming out the schmutz. And pull, I pulled the stack, as you'll see. It was pretty dirty. That's amazing. But we got her good and cleaned out, and hopefully we'll get another several more years out of this thing before we have to replace the unit before the glass line tank starts to, to rust out. All right, let's get back with it. Now, before we put it in there, we want to look at the new orifice versus the old orifice. Make sure we got LP gas because they're different sizes for natural. And, of course, if we look at the box, it does say kit assembly universal burner lp so uh looks close enough for government work if there's any difference in it it's not very much usually there's a substantial difference between the size of the uh, the port and the orifice itself so we're going to use the new one and put her together now i want to show you this because i pulled the stack out of the uh, center of the water heater because if we saw that much crap that much ash on that water heater you know the inside is going to be dirty so I went ahead and pulled the draft inducer off and we're going to clean this off as well as well as kind of air out the uh, the draft inducer the power motor itself the blower unit now we, look at that I'm sorry I lost some of my ash down at the bottom but this is sort of works like a little bit of a spark arrestor causing it to catch this so that we don't blow anything through the vent All right, now as you can see from the filth, we got her cleaned out. Now this goes back down in the center. And you see we have some little gaps here for it to fall into. Let's talk about the flammable vapor sensor in there. Because it was working before we cleaned all the gunk out of it and it stopped afterwards and I couldn't get the gas valve to reset. That gives a code 7 error on this Honeywell valve and you have a reset procedure, but I didn't want to reset. Got it done. I'm going to replace that because it's also original equipment, which means it is, what, nearly 20 years old. Now, the way they work, as I, as I understand it, and you might want to look this up, is on the bottom of the sensor, it has two pads where the two wires eventually get down to it. It has a little inline resistor to kind of give it a base. And it has like a polymer material that when it's brand new, they have some kind of either um, crystal structure or conductive pieces in that polymer. And when it's nice and flat, has not been exposed, it gives a fixed resistance. And over time, as the polymer reacts to the flammable vapors that it might be exposed to, like in a at about said barn in a garage because I have lots of gas powered equipment in there it tends to want to swell and pull those little conductive pieces apart until the the resistance through that sensor gets really large and once it gets out of spec the gas valve sees well I don't I don't have my safety device and I shut that off now I have seen in subsequent models built after this that they actually make a dummy which they didn't redesign the gas valve they just made a resistive jumper and you can buy those and they pull around I don't want to do that because I do have a barn, I mean a garage that's full of, got two rotor tillers, two mowers, a four-wheeler, uh, 
about 20 gallons of gas during mowing season in there, other stuff, paints and things. And so I think having the gas sensor there is an important idea. And they're not but about 25, 30 bucks. I, I ordered one, it was 30 more than I thought it would be. Normally they're around 20 bucks, but I got one for about 30 plus the shipping. So I'm gonna replace that just to be good as new for the future. So now with gasoline vapors, it's a little different than natural gas or propane because gasoline, if you're old enough to remember what a carburetor is, or if you've ever had a lawnmower, they have a range at which gasoline will vaporize, and if it's too much oxygen, it won't burn, and if it's too, li too little oxygen, too rich, it won't burn. So there is a sweet spot, and that's how the carburetor works. So you can often smell gas when it's not necessarily enough to cause an explosion or a problem. Still, we don't like to have things that burn gas in a closed space that burns gas. So we don't want to burn gasoline. We don't want gasoline vapors to build up in our city. So it's a good idea and I certainly would not recommend fiddling with that particular sensor or anything like that. Buy yourself a new one and then sleep well at night.